the scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor demons. Neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or near the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. You know, Scripture, um, it's important. It's really important considering what I've seen people that are supposed to be Christians reacting like right now. They're going to court to be able to, to attend church, and I understand wanting to be in church. It's it's tradition. It's It's where we come together. For some people, that's the only place they feel God's presence. For some people, a drive-up service is just not church. For some people, sitting at home watching a church service is not church. But do we have to be in that building? If we want to, to get together and worship God and feel God's presence, do we really have to be in a building that says church on the front of it? Don't you think that, that, that God can be just as present in our house, in this parking lot, in the prayer garden, out in the woods? Now, yes, there, there are some, some politics going on right now with the church where churches are being persecuted. And I understand, if I can't have 40 people in this church, why can I have 400 people in Lowe's? And there have been memes on Facebook about since it, Lowe's is okay and you can have up to 500 people in Lowe's, they were going to conduct church service in the plumbing aisle. Bring your Bibles and masks. I thought it was pretty funny. So yeah, there, there are problems here, but why as Christians do we allow that to, to make us speak with hate in our hearts? Why are Christians allowing themselves to bicker and curse and just act like the world. Why? You know, Paul said nothing can separate us from God's love. Not heaven, not earth, not life, death, not the demons, not the angels. So why are we in such a rush to get back in a building where it may or may not be safe? Y'all know me. I love to hug. I like hugging everybody every every time they come into the church. Hug them right before they leave. There's even a couple that sneak out the back door to make sure I can't hug them because they get tired of getting hugged. And then there's some of them that will just walk away really quick because they're not hugging people. So they're like, let me get out of here before the preacher sees me. I like to hug. This is hard for me. I like loving all of you. I'd reach through car windows and hug on all of you all day long. I'm not afraid of a virus. But while I might not get the virus, and I'm pretty sure God will protect me, that doesn't mean I should endanger somebody else. It doesn't mean I should endanger somebody that's going through chemo, or somebody that's older and already has respiratory problems, or somebody that's fighting other health. That That's not showing God's love. So why don't we just worship here why the rush to get back in the building why why rush so much to get back into a church building that we act like we're not God's children we can't limit we can't limit God's power you know and I can't flip pages but I got another scripture mark here John chapter 4 verse 24 God is spirit. Those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. It doesn't say you have to be in your Sunday best inside a church that has pews, that has a stained glass window, 
that has a cross on the wall, that has a board of directors or a board of deacons if you're Baptist, or an admin board and a trustees board, that is not what church is about. Those things are for us to run the business of the church. But the business of the church is not the church. When we read Acts, how did they celebrate? How did they get together and worship? They were hiding from officials in each other's home, sharing a meal and discussing the Bible and discussing God and sharing stories about Jesus Christ. Pentecost happened outside. The Spirit of God was rained down when Peter was talking to a crowd of people outside. Basically, it'd be like going downtown Rockingham, me standing on top of the fountain and talking. I'm not comparing myself to Peter. I'm pretty sure tongues of fire aren't going to happen if I stand out there. I probably will get arrested, though. But why are we going to limit God? It's like a big argument about baptism. Why limit God? Do you think because I don't dunk you in the water, your baptism is not valid? Do you think because you get sprinkled, you're not baptized, you're going to have... Do you think because someone's not baptized, even if they've given their heart to God, that God that's going to limit what God does? Does God need water to know that your heart's been turned to Him? Does God need a church to know you coming together and worshiping Him? Does He need a building to pour His Spirit on a crowd of His children that need Him? you think God can only hear your prayer if you've got a microphone and a loudspeaker? I mean, you know, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm just saying. Isaiah verse four, uh, chapter 44, verse 24. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer and Creator. I am the Lord who made all things. I alone stretch out the heavens. Who was with me when I made the earth? God made all of us. God made the earth, the sun, the skies with a with a word. He created the heavens and earth with a word. With a word. Thousands of years ago, he spoke the world into existence. I'm pretty sure that if we ask him and we pray to him and we put our faith in him, he could keep us safe in a parking lot. He could squash this COVID-19 virus. But instead of coming together and praying as one church, we still got arguments among denominations. We have Christians bashing non-Christians. We have Christians acting like petulant children because they can't go inside their church and sit in a pew. Now I love y'all. It's getting close to getting hot. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure I want to be standing on the top of this asphalt preaching to y'all when it hits 110 degrees. I'll get a little sweaty, but I will. Milton thinks that's funny. But I will. If that's what it takes to keep you safe, because as a pastor, it's not just my job to stand up here and preach. Because Lord knows there are much better preachers than me in this world. I know, because I watch a lot of them on Facebook, okay? My job's to be here, look after your spiritual health, but look after your health. So why would I be in a rush to get back in this building and then maybe somebody gets sick? So we can experience more loss, more fear, more doubt. Guys, I love you. I don't want anyone here to get sick. Y'all have heard me talk about it before that the worst part about my job is doing hospital visits. Hospital visits wear me down. I'd rather not get people sick because I was in a rush to be back inside. I don't care if it's a Sunday service. I don't care if it's a potluck dinner. We can do it out here and still maintain social distancing. Now, I know some of you who don't like being hot will complain a lot if we do that because you'd be sweating, Christine. Uh. <laughs> She's going to throw that camera at me in a minute. But we don't limit God. It, you know, the cliche said all the time, 
God is all-powerful, all-knowing. He does things in His time, so we're not supposed to rush His timing. For churches to get a court injunction, to get, go against what the governor says, so they can get into church. Doesn't that sound like we're rushing God's timing? Guys, I love church. I love seeing all your faces. I don't know, some of y'all like the fact that you're in a car where you can wear jeans, and I got the glare off the windshield where I can't see whether you're paying attention or not. But I miss seeing you. If I can't see your face, I don't know if you're hurt. I want to be inside the church too. But we need to trust God. We need to trust the fact that He's here with His Spirit pouring down on us right now. We need to trust that there's a reason He's allowing us to be outside the church. You know, even John Wesley, what started the Methodist movement was the fact that there were so many rules about attending the Anglican church and high church that the lower class and peasants couldn't get there. They didn't have nice clothes. So John Wesley went out to the parks. He went out to the alleys. He went out to street corners of public spaces to share God. Do you think that those people didn't hear God's word and weren't saved just like the people that are being ministered to inside a church? Are we going to limit God? Guys, I know we all want to be in church. And like I said, as of right now, 7th of June, I, I plan to be inside the church, but that is subject to change depending on what's going on with the virus and health and restrictions. But I said it a month ago, I will not stop my job. I'll stand right here if it's 120 degrees, drinking my coffee and still preaching. I love you guys. I don't want us to limit God. Whatever your problem is right now, whether it's suffering loss, whether it's health issues, whether it's injuries from being stupid, whether it's depression because you're not able to be around people and you like people, or worries because of your job, God is still strong enough to take care of that worry. Don't think just because we aren't doing the ritual of high church that God has stopped taking care of His children. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. Let's pray. God, it's hard. It, 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 it's really, really hard to act like your children, to love, to be patient, to have faith, God. When what sometimes gives us strength in our faith is taken away, God, like the church. Lord, sometimes if we're not there, it, it feels like you're not present. God, help us to know that you're present. Help us to remember, God, that nothing stops you. You're the creator of everything, God, and there's nothing that can limit you. Wherever we are, God, you're there. Help us to remember that. Help us to strengthen our faith, God. Help us to have faith in you and you alone. Help us, God, be strong enough to be patient and wait for your timing to see your glory. God, we thank you so much. We just ask you for strength. We ask you for healing over the congregation, healing for all your children, healing for our county, God. But most of all, God, we just want to thank you for being our Father, giving us a second chance through your Son, and for loving us enough to take care of us, protect us, and watch over us. But we ask this in your holy, glorious, precious name.